Hey guys, it's Lucky Ghost here, and today we're going to talk about the Solo Bow Bow Nightblade. We're rocking a bow on the front bar and a bow on the back bar. I've been getting requests to make and finish this build for a long time, and I'm glad I finally did. This build was amazing. It worked out better than I had ever hoped it would. I took it into Vodatron Hollows and trifected the place the first try. It is ready to share with you guys. Everything just kind of clicked on this one. In this video, I'm going to go over everything you need to know to recreate the build just as I did so that you can have the same experience and create an incredibly powerful bow blade for yourself. In this video, I'm going to be talking about race, mundus, attributes, consumables, gear, skills, passives, champion points, and your rotation. As always, I'll put a link down to the written guide in the description below in case it's easier to build off of that after you've heard my explanation of why we chose the skills and the gear that we chose. And please, if you're enjoying this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. First, let's talk about the race. For the race, you can't go wrong with Khajiit or Dark Elf. Orc is a nice runner up, followed by Red Guard and Wood Elf. For the Mundus, this class has tons of crit chance already, so we're gonna go ahead and take Shadow so that when we do crit, we do more damage. As for our attributes, we're gonna put all 64 points into stamina. And for our consumables, we're gonna be running Lava Foot Soup as our food, and we're gonna use basic Essence of Stamina potions when we're doing something easy, and then when we get into some sweaty veteran content where we need to try, we're gonna pull out those Essence of Weapon Power our potions. Essence of Weapon Power Potions are going to grant you Major Brutality, increasing your damage by 20%. They're going to grant you Major Savagery, increasing your crit chance. And they're also going to give you Stamina back and Major Endurance, which increases your recovery by 30%. As for our gear, we're going to wear one piece Slime Craw on the helmet. We're going to combine that with two five piece sets and a Ring of Pell Order. One of those five piece sets is going to be Zogvin. Zogvin is a fantastic bow set because it stacks tons of critical, gives you a little penetration and then also gives us a source of minor force, right? Typically you have to run something like Barb Trap to get minor force, but Barb Trap requires you to be close to the enemy. And when you're running a bow, a lot of times you're not close to the enemy. So this set giving you minor force works out perfectly for a bow character. You can pair that with something like Relican, or if you'd prefer not to use a trial set, you can pair it with Briar. Briar is a great Overland set from Rothgar. You can go farm it yourself, or you can buy it from a guild trader. The Ring of the Bell Order, as I mentioned, is going to be used in this build. It's fantastic for soloing. It's incredibly strong right now, and it's only getting stronger in solo content with the changes that are coming to it in Blackwood. On the back bar, we're going to be using Maelstrom Bow. The Maelstrom Bow, being a bow, is a perfect fit for this build, and we'll get into why it works so well with this build while we talk about the skills. Ultimately, every piece of gear in this build can be found solo if you want to, but it will certainly be easier to run with a group to get that dungeon gear. All right, as for our skills on the front bar, we're going to start with Acid Spray. Acid Spray is a fantastic AoE ability. When there's more than a few mobs in front of you, go ahead and spam your Acid Spray. It's going to do a ton of damage to all of them for you, really helping to melt them down fast. It has an upfront burst of damage, but then it also applies a dot that lasts four seconds. This is basically our AoE spammable, and we'll talk more about the rotation we're going to use when we approach large group of mobs versus the rotation we're going to use against a boss. We'll talk about that more in the rotation section at the end of this video. The second ability we're going to use is Lethal Arrow. Lethal Arrow is going to hit like a truck and it's going to apply a dot to the enemy. This is going to be our single target spammable. Killer's Blade is going to be our execute ability. You have to be a little bit closer for this ability when the enemy is in execute, but it does so much damage, it's worth using. The way this ability works is that when the enemy is below 25% health, it does 300% more damage. So as soon as the enemy hits 25% health, you're going to want to use this as much as possible. It also heals you for 4,000 health if the enemy dies after you kill it with this ability. The fourth ability on the front bar is Consuming Trap. When I ran this build through Vodashran and got the trifecta, the one issue that I had with the build was my sustain was a little bit tough at certain points. So what I'm recommending is to run Consuming Trap as our fourth ability on the front bar. This is going to be way better than the ability I had here, and I wasn't using it. I really... I almost never touched the ability that I put here, uh, maybe a couple times on accident. I really didn't need it. This would have been a thousand times more helpful. It's a fantastic dot, but it also is a tripod. So when something dies, this gives you health, magicka, and stamina back. So it's doing two things for you, a ton of damage and bringing resources back in so that you don't run out. The fifth ability on the front bar is Relentless Focus. Focus your senses for one minute. So this buff lasts for an entire minute and every light attack you do increases your crit damage and healing by 2% up to five five times. 10% additional crit damage is huge because the Nightblade has so much crit that we're going to be critting all the time. So anything we can do to buff our crit damage is going to be great, including getting five stacks of this ability right here. 
Once you have five stacks, you can proc this ability, causing it to deal 14,500 damage and it heals you for 33% of the damage done. So it's fantastic burst damage and a great heal. The hardest part about playing a Nightblade is mastering this ability, getting in the habit of light attacking between your skills and then pressing this button after the fifth or sixth light attack. That's the thing that new Nightblade players struggle with the most. On the bright side, if you forget to cast it after five or six light attacks, you are getting that 10% critical damage buff. And when you're in execute, you're gonna want to leave it at the five stack. You're not gonna wanna proc this ability, you want that 10% crit damage to be applied to your killer's blade while you're casting this over and over on the enemy that's about to die. That's going to make this do as much damage as possible. So you're going to proc this every fifth or sixth ability until execute, at which point you're going to use this and you're going to stop using your relentless focus. As for the ultimate, we're going to be using incapacitating strike. This ultimate is so multifaceted. I love it. It does a ton of damage when we press the button and then it puts a debuff on the enemy, causing them to take 20% more damage from us for six seconds. Seconds. That is one of the strongest debuffs in the entire game. This ultimate only costs 70 ult, so you can use it over and over, and you should. And also, if you cast it with over 120 ultimate stored up, it stuns the enemy for three seconds. So it acts as a stun. A lot of times this is going to happen because you get to 120 ult charge so fast. In addition, whenever this ability is slotted, you gain Reeve, which restores 100 magicka and stamina whenever you deal damage with a light or heavy attack. So this is great for your sustain. It's great for your damage. It puts a really strong debuff on the enemy, further increasing your damage. And if you want it to be, it can be a stun as well. Not only that, but you'll notice we have three abilities from the assassination line in here. And that's for this right here. Increase your weapon and spell critical rating by 40 to 38 for each assassin ability slotted. So that's a lot of extra crit chance just because we've slotted this ability along with a couple others on the front bar, which is where we're doing most of our damage. On the back bar, we're gonna be using Endless Hail. This pairs perfectly with our Maelstrom Bow. Every tick of this does more damage than the last. So make sure you let those last last few ticks hit before you reapply this ability. Do not reapply Endless Hell early as you're missing out on a lot of damage if you do. The second ability on the back bar is Razor Caltrops. This ability is already great for solo play because it's going to put a nice debuff on the enemy. It's called Major Breach, which it's a debuff that's essential for solo play. Typically in a group, your healer's casting this on the enemy for you or your tank's casting this on the enemy for you. But when you're by yourself, you've got to be the one to cast it. So you need an ability to apply it. For stamina tunes, Razor Caltrops is a fantastic option because it it gives us one extra AOE dot, which we always need, and it's providing the debuff at the same time. And better yet, in Blackwood, this ability is getting a buff, so it's even stronger than it is already. The third ability on our back bar is Resolving Vigor. This is going to heal you for 4,000 health per second whenever you press this button. That is a huge heal. It can out heal almost any damage in the game. All you have to do is press the button and roll dodge, and by the time your character stands up again, you'll probably be back at full health. The fourth ability on the back bar is Poison Inject. This is a fantastic ability as well because not only does it do a ton of damage it's a nice dot but in execute it does up to 100 more damage so starting at 50 and below its damage starts really ramping up it's okay if you forget to cast this ability once in a while at the beginning of the fight when the enemy is high health however when the enemy is below 50 percent health you want to make sure this one is ticking at all times and finally dark shade this is a great ability from the nightblade skill line because it's a great single target dot it also does great aoe damage and it costs magicka which means it's great for our sustain since we are a stamina tune. So we've got two abilities that cost Magicka, which is going to make it so that you never run out of resources on this build. The sustain will be absolutely amazing with the two mag abilities and then consuming trap. Just cast that on mobs every once in a while when they're about to die if you're below 50% of your resources. In boss fights, you can use consuming trap as part of your rotation because it's also a great single target dot. All right, now let's talk about the passives because the passives are what make the class tick. You really can't master a class unless you understand what the passives are doing and how you should play around that. So let's talk about that really quickly. In the passives, we're going to grab Master Assassin, which is going to increase our penetration. You know, it's basically just increasing our damage. We're going to grab Executioner, which is going to make it so we get resources back whenever an enemy dies within two seconds of being damaged by us, which, you know, when you're soloing is all the time and in group play most of the time. We're going to grab Pressure Points. This is the one that gives us extra crit chance for every ability slotted from this skill line. And we're using three, so we're getting quite a bit of extra crit chance on the front bar. We're going to grab Hemorrhage because this is going to increase our crit damage. Image. Not only that, dealing critical damage grants us minor savagery, which increases our crit chance even more. This passive is one of many reasons our crit chance and our crit damage are so high on this character and really helps it all come together. In the shadow line, we're going to take Refreshing Shadows. This is just going to increase our sustain. It gives us better regen. We're going to take Shadow Barrier because whenever we cast an ability, we're going to get major resolve anytime we cast a shadow ability. 
we are running one shadow ability on this build. It's Dark Shade. So every time you cast that, you get major resolve for a period of time afterwards. Also, we're going to take Dark Vigor because it's going to increase our health by 3% for each shadow ability slotted. We've got one ability slotted on the back bar. So whenever we're back here, we get 3% more health. That's nice. We're going to grab Dark Veil, which increases the duration of your non-invisibility based shadow abilities by two seconds. So, you know, Dark Shade lasts two seconds longer. Great. That's nice. In Siphoning, we're going to grab Catalyst. Every time we drink a potion, we get 20 ultimate. This is huge. Our ult only costs 70. So one third of our ult is charged up the second we hit a potion. Make sure you're chugging those potions when you're playing a Nightblade. Next, let's talk about our weapon line. We're going to grab all of the bow passives. These are going to make it so that you do more damage when you're farther from the enemy. They're going to increase your critical rating and your damage and your efficiency with your abilities. And not only that, anytime you roll dodge, you're going to move 30% faster for four seconds. We're going to take all of the medium armor passives because we are wearing medium armor. If you decide that you're too squishy, you could wear one piece of heavy. And as a result, you can grab all but the last heavy armor passive. If you decide to run barb trap, then make sure you grab the first four abilities in the fighter skill. You would run barb trap if you're not wearing Zogbin. If you are wearing Zogbin, then you don't need to worry about this. You're going to grab both of the passives in the undaunted skill line. In the assault line, you're going to grab continuous attack. This is going to give you 30% increased move speed at all times everywhere in the world. A lot of people have been telling me lately i thought that was only in cyrodiil no this is everywhere everywhere in tamriel you get 30 percent increased move speed don't put a second point into it though there's no point unless you're a pvp -er. it does not increase the move speed bonus next we're going to grab all of our racial passives so whatever race you are grab all your passives they are very useful and then last but not least we're going to take medicinal use and we're going to max that passive out this is going to cause your potions to have 100 uptime they will last as long as the cooldown because they increase the potion duration 30%. All right, now let's talk about the rotation. There's two rotations for any build. So I'll go over both. There's one when you're parsing on a single target or what is mostly a single target fight, like a boss fight. In that situation, you're going to start by pre-buffing with your Relentless Focus and then your Dark Shade. We start with these because they don't draw aggro. We can cast these abilities and the enemy won't notice. And then we're going to cast Endless Hail, Caltrops, and Poison Injection. After that, we're going to go to the front bar and we're going to throw down our front bar dots, which are going to be our Acid Spray and our Consuming Trap. After every fifth light attack, you can press Relentless Focus to throw out that burst damage or you can ignore it for a little bit of a damage loss, but a much simpler rotation. I encourage you to try to press it whenever you can for the extra damage, but if you forget, it's not the end of the world. You're going to use Lethal Arrow as your spammable anytime all of your dots are ticking, and then when the enemy is below 25% health, you're going to start using Killer's Blade instead. As for the ultimate, what you're going to want to do is get all of your dots on the back bar ticking, get your dots on the front bar ticking, make sure your Relentless Focus is ready to proc, and then you're going to use your ultimate, proc your Relentless Focus for the burst damage, which is now going to do 20% more than it was already going to do, and then you're going to use your spam for the rest of that six second 20% buff. That is how you best maximize your ultimate on the Nightblade. Now, what if you're walking up to a group of mobs, right? On a group of mobs, it's a slightly different rotation. You're going to focus on your AoE abilities. So you're going to start with your Endless Hail and your Caltrops. This is going to get an AoE dot and an AoE debuff out there on them for you. It's also going to slow them, right? Because Caltrops reduces their movement speed by 50%. And it's going to allow you to start spamming Acid Spray as they crawl towards you, debuffed, taking more damage. You can use Acid Spray until they die or until your dots start to drop. You go back and reapply them and continue with acid spray if there's any chunky ones left you can start using your single target spammables on those boys for the large packs of aoe i like to leave my relentless focus at five stacks and that way all my aoe abilities are getting an extra 10 percent crit damage whenever they crit as opposed to firing a ton of damage at one mob when i'm attacking five or six all right, as for our champion points, with Blackwood, champion points have been adjusted once again. Zoss has compressed the champion point power creep. What this means for you is you get stronger sooner. It used to be our power was capping out around CP 21 or 2200. Now you cap out in power at 1650, so much sooner than you used to. So you're going to reach max power a lot quicker. I'm very excited about this change. It means a lot less grinding for all of us to reach our character's maximum potential. They've also added a healer subtree here, but we're not going to spend much time on that because we're a solo DPS. We are also seeing a really significant adjustment to the way preparation works in the chest here. This passive was not only buffed, but it also costs half as many points to max it out. So it's giving us 10% damage reduction for only 20 points. That's pretty awesome. We're definitely going to grab this a little bit earlier than we used to as a result. And if your character feels squishy, feel free 
free to deviate from the order that I suggest and grab this sooner than later to take that 10% less damage from all incoming attacks. This is a very, very effective passive. In the case that you do want to prioritize damage though, it's going to look something like this. We're going to start with precision, put 20 points in. Then we're going to put 50 points into fighting finesse and slot that because it is a slottable. Remember, you do have to slot slottables onto the bar up here. Otherwise, you don't get anything for them. Basically, anything that's not a yellow star needs to be slotted. A purple star means it's a sub menu. A yellow star means it's always active. And the blue stars here mean you got to slot them. We're going to level that up and slot it. Then we're going to go into the elbow. We're going to put 20 points into piercing. We're going to back out. We're going to put 50 points into deadly aim, 50 points into thaumaturge, and 50 points into biting aura. Those are all slottable, so make sure you slot all three. Then we're going to go over here to tireless discipline and put 20 points into that. Then we're going to go into the chest. We're going to put 10 points into quick recovery and 20 points into preparation. Then we're going to back out. We're going to go back into the elbow and we're going to put 20 points into battle mastery. We're going to fill up mighty. Then we're going to put 20 more points into Battle Mastery again. And for where to put your points beyond this, be sure to refer to the written guide linked in the description below. Next, let's talk about the Red Tree. We're going to start off by putting 50 points into Boundless Vitality and 50 points into Rejuvenation. These are both slottables, so make sure you slot them. And remember, after you slot these slottables, you also have to hit the Confirm button or else you're not getting credit for them. So make sure after you're done putting your points in that you do hit the Confirm button at the bottom or else everything you do doesn't count yet. Then we're going to go here to Templing and put 15 points in. Then we're going to put 10 points into Mystic Tenacity, 20 points into Hero's Vigor, and 50 points into Bloody Renewal. Make sure to slot Bloody renewal as it is a slottable then we're going to go back over here to ironclad put 50 points into that and slot it as well then we're going to top off tumbling and we're going to top off defiance then we're going to go over to this side put eight points into hasty fill up tireless guardian fill up fortification fill up hasty now and then fill up sprinter for where to put your points beyond this point, be sure to check out the written guide linked in the description below. Last but not least, the green tree. The green tree is a tree that is meant to not be min-maxed. There's no additional power to be found here. There's no wrong or right choice. Basically, you're going to want to invest in the things that apply to what you're doing. This side over here on the left is thieving. This side over here is fishing. This is potion and food efficiency. And then you, in the chest area here, you have nodes and treasure chests and gear-related things like disassembly. Basically, pick the things that seem like they're going to be the most useful for you and choose those passives. But don't forget to slot them if they're slottables. I'm going to let you choose where to put these points. However, if you want to know which ones I usually grab, I'll put that in the written guide linked in the description below. And that's all there is to the solo bow blade. This build came out way better than I had hoped. From the second I finished Vatatron Hollows, I couldn't wait to get this build guide recorded and share it with you guys. I hope you enjoyed as much as I did. If you have any questions, be sure to let me know in the comments below. I try to answer every single one. And if you ever want to hang out with someone else who loves ESO, be sure to swing by my Twitch stream at twitch.tv slash lucky ghost. And finally, I'd like to thank my YouTube members for supporting the channel by becoming members. To find out how to become a member of this channel and what the perks are, click the join button below. That's all for this video. I'll see you in the next one.